Well, 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 then isn't the consequences of my actions. Hello, and welcome back to Warhammer 3. We're stumbling through our first campaign right now, and it turns out if you press the Loot City button every time you conquer anything, then the original inhabitants of that city will rebel against you and try to kill your cities and pillage your lands. And, you know, that makes sense. I can't say I'm surprised by that, but I was kind of hoping I'd be allowed to get away with it. Glad that I can't. It's nice when mechanics actually mean something. I'm going to be honest, though. I'm in an awkward situation myself. I made a lot of mistakes, but this rebellion is definitely the worst one. Because I am Shield currently, if we check out diplomacy, I don't think I can do that by clicking myself. But if we were to click on them, well, are you just fortress? rebels? Can I even diplomacy with you? No. Fail. We were to click on you, though, we can see I'm actually strength rank 12. I've made a lot of mistakes, but if you think how well you're playing is denoted entirely by your strength rank number, then making all these archers was clearly a good decision. The thing is, those archers are only valuable if I'm actually conquering with them. So, taking the Tyrion back here on Force March so that I can have an ally start the fight with this guy feels really bad. And I was thinking what I should be doing instead, because, like, I, I could attack these guys and their land's looking pretty corrupt. Ignore the rainbow, that's very purple and alarming. But this is a high elf faction. And so is this, and so is that. And so is this guy, too, actually. Which makes it sort of awkward for me, because the only people I'm really good to go to war with are the orcs over here. And that's fine, I'd be happy to go to war with them, but again, moving this way to the left isn't really helping me with that. But while we're talking about the mistakes I've made before we get into this turn, I should probably mention, I think the funniest mistake I made, like recruiting a lord and recruiting units with them to conquer stuff faster, that's completely reasonable. I should have recruited them, recruited units, and then conquered a city with them instead of just making one bigger army. I could have conquered faster instead of conquering safer. That would have been better. But definitely the most important thing I did roll with that lord is I was like, oh, huh, I guess I could have rolled any of these spell groups, and it looks like I'm getting beast this turn or something. Yeah, no, you just pick the button for the type of wizard you want, which, you know, makes more sense than what I was thinking happened. And I don't know which school was best, but this looks like it's probably... It's not alphabetical, it's just sort of random. I imagine the Lord of Beast isn't just the best one, though. I don't know why it's the default, but if I had a gun to my head, I'd assume I have the wrong Archmage. Now, I could get rid of this Archmage and look at all the spells and pick who I want instead, and that would be a sensible thing to do. But right now, I need to figure out what I'm doing about this group of Dark Elves and where my army's going, and then we'll decide whether or not this person gets replaced now or later. Can I move units without a Lord? It looks like I can, right? Is that what's happening? This might just be forcing me to load a save, like, immediately, but just one second. Is this working? Does this do what I think it does? No, that just moved the whole army. So if I try to move one unit again, whole army. Yeah, I don't know what you select one unit for, but it's not to split the army. They need to be with a lord. So between videos, I was looking at all the high elves, and this one seems to hate me, unlike everyone else. Everyone else is cool with me. So I'm not opposed to just killing this guy since my rebels are pushing me in this direction anyway. Protector. And I'm not really seeing a way to deal with these rebels other than the enter march stance, run down here next to them. Beginning my journey. And now that I'm here, by the white I think this works. I haven't actually done this before, I bring but I should be able to come fire. fight you. I know my destination. No. Right, I can walk here and I'll have reinforcements from the other one. Yes, decisive victory, low casualties. I am going to see if I can auto resolve this. We lost, you know, like a hundred men, but we're also already here. I can't force labor because I don't have enough captives. Definitely ransom for influence and money. And do we have movement left? We do. We basically haven't taken any wounds though, so I was gonna say I can pop back in the city to recover wounds, but there's not really a good reason to do that. So the real question I have is just, should I recruit a new lord? How much would that even cost me? I guess the first thing I should check is if I were to recruit Hero instead, which by the way, this is how I recruit the nobles, I should be here at some point. And I probably do want at least one noble. Because I assume they do something useful, otherwise why would you have them, right? And yeah, embed Hero, replenish troops, that seems pretty good. Ammunition minus 10% for armies in region. Don't know if I like that, but I'll take the one who sucks in general. I think first things first, since we made the building to get this guy, we obviously you want to buy him and then see what he does. Yes, banner. thank you. I'm trying to figure out what he does. Shut Please stop. Dauntless. So he's a replenished troops ability that we can spec into. 
it might be worth it to just like have them stay at home and increase trade at some point, but for now, that's not really a thing that's available to me. I like that ability. Since I'm interested in confederating high elves at some point, this just seems obviously good. But yeah, for now, this is just a thing that seems like it should be with my main army. Tyrion. And I'm convinced I do want to make a new army. Oh, I got a plus 500 gold for recruiting him. Nice. And we killed them. And we got rank two on the person we're deleting. Maybe I should have made a new one before that, huh? Yeah, that's definitely incorrect. It's not like it's the first mistake we're making. I found out how to disband her, by the way. You left click her to get this page. And you can see that our number one spell is to turn into something and attack better. And that's just... You know, not what sorcerers seem like they're about. This feels like a school of spells suited for weird hybrid units and not high elven wizards. So I'm gonna go with my gut and just disband you instead. I should look at like what all of these do and pick it from there. But my gut's just being like, it's gonna be something metal like shadows, well, metal or death, right? Surely those are the ones that are really good. Or you pick high magic because probably only high elves get that one. I can look at this stuff. I know there's a thing for this, right? Unit and spell browser. There we go. I'll be back with you in a little while. So, at a glance, the only one of these that seems like it's just intuitive damage dealing is Lore of Heavens, which I think is the one I've actually been using, isn't it? I am honored. Yeah, you're a Mage of the Heavens as well. Eh, whatever, it's fine. I'll have multiple Mages of the Heavens and I'll learn about those spells in this campaign. What does Peaky mean? Physical resistance minus 10, that's probably fine. It better be fine, it's my only option. I'm sorry, did I not recruit a hero? I could have sworn that's a thing I did. I recruited a noble here. I don't seem to see them. Oh, there they are, they're hiding. They're just fully clipped into the town, okay. And this person's also not able to move just now. That's fine, they can, can pop into the town. I think you're already in the town, except you're not. True. Stopping for the moment. All right, cool, you you're there now, that's fine. We'll sort it out next turn. I'm definitely going to want more units, though, because I am 100% going to be going into more wars. The plan, I think... Well, running out of money is not a good plan. We're better off just saving the money and recruiting normally next turn. Should be getting the ones with armor. And also, why do the ones with the armor distinctly look less armor in their pictures? Since money is so tight, I'm going to keep getting the unarmored ones they've been doing fine so far. High Elven Archmage. Anyway, unassigned skill points. People did level up from that. And apparently I never finished off Bowmaster, so that's a pretty easy choice here. Picking up Roiling Skies seems worth it. It's a passive where anytime I use it, the enemies near what I'm doing slow down and lose melee defense. Just seems obviously good. And as for our one building, if I'm making anything, it's gonna be this. Probably should be that. Let's end our turn and see if things get better next turn if we just keep making it worse. They who whisper. I can't do anything that costs influence, so I've just got to give up on those, which would have been what? Income from buildings. Income from buildings, but less, but longer, maybe? Anyway, my options are to either... <laughs> let's not anger the populace. Let's go ahead and just gain 10 influence instead. The Druki, dark elves to the ignorant races, are an Why are we over here? Oh. Left unchecked. There is a teleport button that I cannot currently use as I am in a stance. There is a quest here I need to do for $5,000 that feels very important right now. I'm interested. We've also researched better bows. That seems pretty good. And we'll get even more money for doing that quest, apparently. Wait, no, win 10 battles with a single hero character. And right now we're currently at five. So we need five more battles under Tyrion, I'm guessing. Oh, wait, no, this person's here. That's what it is. So theoretically, I could get a mage and not an archmage by having the building for it, but I don't. That's fine. You have my attention. Going to swap units with you. This was definitely not the efficient way to do it. <laughs> Should have done it the other way around. But you can have one of these people that are untrained currently. I'm going to pick up this guy. Yeah, sure. Replenish his troops. The point is that you're part of the army now. Personal independent agents can perform actions. Here's what else we added to an army, which case they will fight as a powerful single person unit in battle. So I think if you have a hero and not a lord, if you have a hero but not a lord and it's alone, it's like a spy from Rome. And the moment it becomes part of an army or if it's a lord instead, it would just be like a single unit on the battlefield. Anyway, there's $500. Good job, man. 
Master of Magic. This is presumably not going to be super well defended, right? I don't know how to check if it's well defended. I know the orcs hate me because they just have minus 100 you're an elf, which is, you know, fair, but still. My plan is definitely, though, to walk this direction to the edge of my territory and camp. Wait, no, not with you. Magic in pure With this garrison unit, my plan is to walk to the right. The Archmage marches. Which I can change while doing. Okay, cool. Wasn't expecting that. I thought I was just pressing the wrong buttons for no reason. Oh yeah, I meant to press and camp. That's a fairly Trained important button that I need to press to tower. do this. Oh. That's unfortunate. What I'm going to do then do is enter in. March and return to the city so I can recruit from there. Which is definitely Child not the most play. elegant way to do this. Huh, so that doesn't work. Let me rephrase that. What I'm going to do is load my save because I didn't know how mechanics work. All right, so this time we're going to do it the sensible way. Where you walk Archmage. over with the other lord whose movement matters less and we take away a unit of inexperienced archers. I guess I just do that. I think I did it. Ready for orders. Yes. Alaria now we walk died. this way because the way we're ultimately what going. If this guy comes over. Troy, you just have to get in the group. We're currently in a march. We want to be in stance none. What stance are you currently at? So how's in camp work? There's no marking to show like a minimal range for in camp. What are the specific rules on this? I'm surprised there's not like a point where it shows that you're going past the in camp range here. But yeah, I'm just going to start in camp now and go to the edge. I thought I could go to the edge and then start in camp, but apparently not. And then I'm going to head right, pick up some more archers. I should probably get like a number of melee units, but um, all right, what would be sensible, what would be really sensible would be to recruit another hero and get another noble and have the money to do that. But apparently I can't. Why is that? Oh, I need more of the building that gets me nobles to get more nobles. Checks out. No, I believe I can just teleport here. Yeah, I can teleport to this by paying 500 gold now that I'm not in a stance that interferes with it. Elf ones defend. I can also just like force march and do it next turn without paying 500 gold. But by doing it this turn, I basically spend the 500 gold to conquer this city a turn faster, which is then going to be 150 gold basically, right? And these people don't like me, so I may as well kill them all. That's how diplomacy works, I think. Also, Lothar is trying to grow, apparently. Wait, no, it's not. It has plus one population, but it needs plus two population to grow. Anyway, let's look at the next research. That seems important. This is useless now, but it's for artillery in the future. And I feel like I'm probably supposed to get artillery for doing sieges of big settlements, right? That seems like a sensible assumption about how the game works. I'm going to pick it for that reason. Because I can't pick anything else that seems particularly good, except, like, maybe Spear Wall for defense. But even then, so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this. I'm happy with this. And now the only question is, what I are we doing with Tyrion? Because we can easily go right and fight the Orcs. We don't have to go left. The question's just, like, why should I go right? Do I think this army can do it? Do I think I can come here, take this, and hold it? eventually push further and the answer is like yeah i believe in archers they seem pretty good so far the counterpoint is that because i can teleport to this location i can conquer the goblins or sorry the green skins they're not orcs or goblins they're just all of them they're green skins i can come this way and then teleport out essentially building this army as up as i go and that would make sense i can fight whoever's above this with what's left of the army or if they're just more elves i can force march to somewhere else maybe or start fighting elves with it but i like going right now because it means that i'm able to use this to teleport a lot further but that might be fake value that might not actually matter i've got a full health army right now basically let's go fight this yes i am sure i want to teleport that is a dragon that's just a whole ass dragon and there is a man on it hello malekith how are things going you think this would be a Pyrrhic victory. Yeah, 100 armor is a very large number, isn't it? I don't know what I expected. Decline attack. Did we already pay for it? Are we there? 
Okay, I'm gonna do it again and see if I'm losing money every time I try to do this. Decline attack. It goes down, but it comes back when you decline. Okay. So that makes it a lot less bullshit than I was thinking. It was, I can just look at this and decide, do I think this is something I'm able to do? This stuff's really heavily armored is the main thing I'm saying. Like, sure, they have stuff like these guys that are basically unarmored, but most of their stuff has armor 80. It feels very high. The fact Malakut's on a dragon makes me think I'm meant to do this later in the game. It does already think that I'll win on an auto resolve though, which has got to be worth something, right? I mean, I can't auto resolve to be fair, but... Oh wait, I'm getting reinforcements. Teclis is here to help me, whoever Teclis is. He can have spells, I've got the Silver Helms, a Flamespire Phoenix, and a bunch of Reavers. Sure, wait, that's not a Reaver. Your name is Serion, implying that... Oh, it's showing me their title for some reason when I get to the right. That's weird that it's switching to the name of the faction. Whatever, I think we can do this. Because of the reinforcements, this is a lot more fair than I thought it was. What's this screen? Do I need to click start battle? But is the lion trapped when cornered by the rat? Do warriors squirm when confronted by I'm weakling? talking a lot of shit. That man is on a dragon. Gird your souls. Let them come. Understood. Oh. All right, so I suspect that something may have broken a little bit. Because this is what I thought was going to happen when I click start battle. The battle's just started now. <laughs> Which, you know, makes sense, but the screen was just black. Alright, let's see if I did anything vague resembling an appropriate way of reassembling my forces. Everyone scatter, we're all in the wrong spots. I think it makes sense to charge on the flank there to buy time. Actually, no it doesn't. They're gonna come for me. You're good where you are. They're all moving about in sensible ways. Where's you? Where's you? That's some grammar, all right. When have this come forward? Now, I have a question. Is this able to be used? Oh, way more frequently than I thought it could. Yeah. Uh, something's gone wrong. Who's in the weird place? It's you. Tyrion, just come be a distraction. Where is my noble? Gonna have you run forward to just ball them up a little bit. Same with Tyrion. I feel like I'm managing this exceptionally poorly. Prevent that from running in. Shoot there. Where is Malekith? Isn't there a man on a dragon somewhere around here? That feels like an important detail that's gotten lost in the chaos. Where are my horsemen? Get across the other side. Make sure that nothing over here gets too crazy. Are any of my archers engaged in the fray? No. I'm gonna pull all my spearmen back. I'm gonna pull the Lothar and Seaguard back. Both of you pull back as well. I haven't had to use any magic yet. It feels weird. It feels like I should have had to use magic. Oh, that was my own guys. Man, it's hard to remember things. Is this Malekith? No, that's just a guy. Where is... Oh, there he is. His dragon's much smaller on the battle map. Yeah, the dragon, unsurprisingly, do hit kinda hard. Wait, why am I trying to move melee units towards it? Everyone shoot the dragon. Do I have any spells that are useful against, like, flying enemies? It doesn't really feel like it, right? That seems like it's very ground-based. Yeah, that definitely does not go into the air. And I should be watching for their magic, for obvious reasons. So it looks like they're very much able to dodge my arrows the same way I'm able to dodge their arrows. The Phoenix may be pinning it a little bit. And I do just mean a little bit.
All right, it looks like it's finally grounded in Fighting Fury, which is not going... It's just dying instantly now that it landed. That was a bad call. Okay, yeah, so they're definitely able to dodge things when they're in the air, like I was thinking. And now that these are landed over here... I don't know if Friendly Fire exists. Let's find out. Hey, Phoenix, I like you being alive. I think I'm just done using you for the fight. Maybe run stuff down with it or pin archers, but nothing else. Also, apparently these guys were being used in the distance and routed. Checks out that if I lost track of a unit, it's just in tremendous danger and dying. I have used all of my bombards here, apparently. Try to stop that cycle charging. You are berserking. Neat. Oh, I have rings here that, like, shoot fireballs. Yeah, that's a thing this character has. And it appears to do work. Yes. You know, I just really don't feel like I'm managing this fight well at all. Also, wasn't I supposed to get reinforcements? I don't know if I was supposed to click a button to manage them myself or something. But that definitely didn't really happen, huh? Understood. Pestilus reinforces our flanks, our victory's assured, destroy the remaining Drew Gate. Okay, so they're finally showing up once the battle's already over. The reinforcements are actually just a prank. Good joke, guys. Really appreciate that. I go then. I go. Tireless. Hey gang, uh, shoot this guy that's currently about to kill our king. Well, I guess he's not our king, but our legendary lord. Striking for onward! He would really like to be alive at the end of this, much like the Phoenix. I don't know if my guy can get hit by this still. Oh, they definitely can. I saw them all fall over and take damage. Yeah, don't do that. Watch out with that. I don't know if it's only the physics or the damage. I have every reason to think the damage is applying. What's actually still fighting? That unit? This feels over, right? Yes. That was nasty and poorly managed, but we did it, I guess. Vast majority of our damage going on to our spearmen and our hero, which feels appropriate. Also, it looks like there was meaningful tanking and damage done by the new noble, so... So he does appear to be earning his keep, at the very least. Alright, we have a choice to make still. Treasury and influence, replenishment rate... I think I care about this more than the replenishment at this exact moment. Definitely not the experience. So much of my army is fine that this they just feels way more efficient. And also, we've been comically low on influence for a while now, so that's just helpful. Defeated Malekith, income from raiding, passive ability frenzy. Immune to psychology. I see therapy is not going well for Tyrion. Anyway, except for that, this does appear to be... Enabled of leadership is higher than 50% of base. Oh, so if you're not demoralized. This does appear to be a straight buff for beating Malekith, though, so that's good. And we got a steed for our wizard, and the dragon armor Venerion, which is, you know, just really unambiguously good. 15 armor, 10% resistance to physical, 10% resistance to everything. Yeah, I'll take that. And then we get 5,030 influence, casualty replenishment, increase for all armies for two turns, which we'll need, because that just wrecked us a little bit. Wait, where are we? Oh, we didn't actually move from doing that. So it's only, like, technically there. You can do it from anywhere, just call it some money. That's a very funny compromise. So to some degree, I feel like I should just go into Lothurn and wait for a turn to get my fatigue back. Or not my fatigue back, to heal my units faster. This is mechanic, right? We can see it's, like, right past the 50, right on the 6. If I go into the city, they regenerate faster, yeah. I feel like that's probably worth doing. It also probably means that I should have... I don't know. There's some way to optimize that where you're recovering more efficiently, but this is fine for now, I guess. And we have skill points to assign, as always. I think it's worth picking this up just for the increased speed and melee defense for doing shenanigans. It seems hard to argue with that one. And also with Route Marcher. Just actually moving around the campaign map is starting to matter more as I get further and further out from my base of operations. And then next turn, we'll walk the edge of our movement so that we can attack on the third turn on Ball's Anvil. Or we'll figure out we're going the other way and attack in this direction. One of the two. 
Wait I'll a second. I figured thing. this out. Moving Come up. over here to combine armies. We're going to take every single one of our units that's not severely injured right now. Except for the wizard. And send them over. High elven I, I thought I was going Tyrion. to do that. Let's try again. Okay, there we go. We appear to have actually done it this time. Tyrion can't garrison. quite make it back to the city, but that's fine. I Stance, march, get into the city. I assume that still works for replenishment. It does. Sir. And then we'll send this away to start the war early and we'll regroup going right because that feels more diplomatically acceptable. We're going to pick up evasion now, which gives us the ability, I think, to just move better, right? Speed plus five, melee defense plus five. Seems good. I don't know if I should be going for Chain Lightning or Comet of Cassandra. I'm going with Comet because it doesn't say the word random on it. That's the final verdict. And we're going to pick up more replenished troops on this guy. It seems like the sensible thing to do. And apparently he has more points, so we're going to do something else as well. We're going to pick up speed because it seems very valuable. Is that stupid? Probably. Let's go with Weapon Master to unlock all of this stuff. And speed. I, I don't know what I should be doing on this man. I really just wanted him for troop replenishment more than anything else. And rather than recruiting archers here, because I have literally no melee units, I'll be picking up Lothar and Seaguard instead, because I need something to pretend it's a front line. We have the ability to upgrade this tower now, which will increase income generated, and like it's just mandatory anyway, so we do that. And there's nothing else in need of being built right now, so that'll be the end of the turn, I think. We could afford to do rights if we wanted them. We have the money for once. I kind of feel like I want the increased control and reduced construction cost. How long does this last? Ten turns? Five turns? Still. I think this one's just a massive net gain in money that I'm going to do now. Because if I do this, I can just unbuild and rebuild that thing I just started, right? You must restore order. I might bet I needed to stop the building before I did this, though. Because I might be canceling it for the new cost now, but theoretically I could have saved 125 gold right now. That'll be something for editing me to check and find out whether or not that's actually how I'm supposed to do it. Very much depends on how the game is coded. Anyway, for now, I think we're done. So I can directly spend influence to increase reputation with people, which seems important for the idea of like, what's it called, confederating them? Welcome to the court of the ever. But the issue is like you look at Joint Confederation, we're currently seeing a negative a hundred. So I mean like you know, it's not actually helpful. Is strength rank supposed to be low or high? Because my relative faction strength modifier is negative right now, and I thought that I was tenth in the world. I could be bottom ten though. It seems like if I were 71 ranks higher than you in strength, my relative strength should be a positive relationship, shouldn't it? I'm definitely not understanding something currently. Regardless, let's end the turn and move on with our lives. Let's counter offer and just ask them for the tiniest amount of gold in the world. I can get about $150 out of them. That's the currency in this game, right? The High Elves use American dollars. Pretty sure that's canonically accurate. Yeah, the additional information about sets in the middle of this, like, multiple paragraphs of irrelevant garbage is that they exist and they do things. Thanks. Really appreciate that. Also, there's this thing called fusing and salvaging. It exists. Good luck. That does remind me, though, I should probably equip my magical items to people. So I'm exactly in range to reinforce for this battle, which makes it seem really obviously good to reinforce for this battle, right? Master Mage. Uh, I would like to declare war on this man. I don't know why the attack button's not there. Declare war. Yes. That's all right. I didn't need any allies to become involved in the dispute. I should have checked if anyone wanted me to join their battle. Am I a tile out of range? Is that the problem? So be That's fine. I'm not in force march here, so I can just attack on this one and get the reinforcements the other way. Besides the victory, low casualties, I'll take the auto. We lost next to nothing. I know it didn't work out last time, but like... 
Come on, it's fun. We need the more loot, right? Obviously. We're all normal. We can get away with it. Oh, hey, we got the cloak of beards. Are you telling me about this? I don't know that I'm going to be seeing dwarves anytime soon, but thanks. I really should equip these magical items, though. I was talking about that a second ago. I just forgot to do it. False one. True magic guides me. Champion of the Ever Queen. So I can still pick up more archers here, which seems perfectly reasonable. And then on the units that are actually in the city, I can do global recruitment to pick up other things from further away. But do I even want to? We're currently sitting in a total of 30 units. Oh, hey, it's more elves going to work with the other side of Gouger Face Smasher. What a name. An archmage is accustomed we should probably repair this stuff. I, I did just forget about that. But it is important. What did you have here, by the way? Elven Craftsman. Feels weird for an orcish settlement, but okay. Guess it wasn't an orcish settlement for long. Following your orders. Oh, hey, this has been automatically equipped. Thank you. We do probably just want to put on the Shield of Tallest, though. Oh, that's a type of armor. It's not like a thing that goes in your hand. Shields are armor. Okay, so never mind then. I think I would rather have the Talisman here so that I can forget to buff myself. And then on the Tyrion, hero that travels with this guy, they should be the one carrying. Oh, wait, you can use stuff that he couldn't, though. Spell resistance, miscast chance. Yeah, we're. Wait, the no, not that one. Us. We're still going to go with the Ruby Ring of Ruin, pick up this shield. You should probably also have a shield. And uh, I don't love you, so good luck. Effortless. Oh, hey, it's Noctilus. He's back. I wonder if he's here to go to war with me. Weapon strength 473, missile strength 603, range 338. I know what a Necrofex Colossus is. It's like the flagstone unit of the vampire counts. But I I didn't know what its stats were. They're very funny to look at. Anyway, hopefully he's here to go to war with literally anyone but me. Anyway, this turns over, so let's see what the next one holds. It might be war with the vampire counts. Wait, those aren't the vampire counts. War with the vampire pirates? The Vampire Coast, the other C word. I see my confusion. Ah, that's unfortunate. The elves north of me just took that settlement. Meaning I'm either going to war with elves or I'm not going to war. And I didn't build 30 units of archers so that I could go to peace. For upgrading a settlement, we get gambler's armor. Neat. Assistance is available should you need it, my lord. You Thanks. Really appreciate the pro tip. The Disappeared and Karen feel negative growth for three turns. That seems pretty bad. Anyway, this stuff does appear to be good. We should give that to somebody. Protector of the Ever Queen. Yeah, I'll definitely hand that over to here. It's way better than the old stuff I was using. The Enchanted Shield is just nowhere close. Shield of Alaria. Yeah, so we're going to switch armies here. We're going to hand over... You know, basically just everything, right? Now to send everything over. I think it's better to have Lothar and Seaguard than Archers. That just logically makes sense to me. Then we take this army. There's only one place to go. By I can just barely make it there, apparently. Thanks, Route Marker. That was a good investment. And decisive victory, low casualties. That's going to be auto resolved then. Hungers. We lost 135 guys, basically nothing. We're not going to do the loot and occupy this again. I know what will ours. happen. I've learned my lesson. We get Assault of Stone. What does this do? Looks like a tiny earthquake ability. Not quite sure. And we killed Sneak, which, um, you know, we did that. Regiment of Renown unlocked Talons of Torqueda, Archer's Light Armor. I think that's just a mercenary, basically. And we also have some Spearmen. A food taster, thanks. Destroyed Skull and Crag. I mean, I had help this time. Her servant. They need to regenerate. The question is, where do these archers go? What are we fighting next? Is we're just pushing north, they go north. If we're doing something else, then things get more complicated. I think we're just going north, though, with a comically overlarge stack of archers that is just clearly not how you're supposed to play the game. But I'll be damned if I'm going to stop now. Like, what's the correct ratio of archers to other shit? Because, I mean, I'm sure there is one, and it's not this, but this is funny. Oh, yeah, what did Noctilus get up to in, like, the triple speed end turn phase? You know, we just took his boat somewhere, did boat stuff with it. Fair enough. 
Anyway, that fight got tearing another level, and that's probably going to be... Oh, wait, we've unlocked some stuff here. So I have to pick a mutually dedicated exclusive ability. I like campaign movement range plus five, charge bonus plus five. Minus 5% upkeep for Lothurn Sea Guards is not a negligible amount of money, but there's probably something better than that. Upkeep minus 5% for archers and casualty replenishment rate plus 5%. It's probably going to be Isha then, because that's the world that I've chosen to live in. Your orders. The archer is also leveling up. I figured out, I think the way you overcast something is by double clicking on it. I'm not certain if that's how it works, and I assume you double press the hotkey if you want to do the other thing. Like if you want to use the hotkey version of Overcast, I'm not really sure yet. I'm going by judging UI and other people's videos where they're not even talking about the mechanic. I can reduce the cooldown, that's nice, but not like the biggest thing in the world. It's probably more valuable just to immediately pick up magical reserves and have more magic permission. That's not going to matter too much. I think this is probably more valuable. It's hard for me to say. And it lets me overcast it, so that's probably worth something, right? Awaiting orders. Servant of the king. The noble makes up a rank, gets more replenishment, because that's his main job. Lysine has finally grown, so we can upgrade the elven artisan. I love the idea that you're near the scaven, so you have to build city tunnels to find them. That's so stupid. Stupid in a good way. It's stupid in the most, like, irritating, lore-appropriate way possible. It might be worth building a watchtower here just because this is, like, essentially the frontier, but I don't think so, right? I could unlock the recruitment of eagles. Can you tell me why I would want great eagles? They're very fast, monstrous beasts. They're one unit enemies, like a phoenix would be. They're very fast. Checks out. <laughs> I wasn't reading very fast that time. I was just reading speed 110, and I said it the exact same way. Weapon strength 390. I mean... I imagine this is basically just a non-magical phoenix, right? Uh, the phoenix is definitely a lot less good at killing things by the look of this. Wait, no, I'm reading melee attack, not weapon strength. I'm not sure what the difference in those things are anymore. Split between base and armor piercing as opposed to what? What's your weapon strength if you're... I'm so confused. What's the difference in weapon strength and melee attack? Because I would assume they're related, but they appear to be completely different numbers. Anyway, I'm definitely going to build an Elven Craftsman when I have a new build slot here. And since I already have one here, it's a much more complicated choice. I think I'm going to go with control and money, though. I think I'm just looking to build an economy right now and tech up. I'm not seeing any other buildings that actually strike me as being useful. This whole gain a moderate income quest is really hard to accomplish when I won't stop building archers. Anyway, that'll be the end of turn 8, so let's see what comes next. I want to say we start with 280 factions, we're down to 232, so 50 of them kick the bucket real fast. Admittedly, I'm responsible for two of those, but that checks out. It, it feels like Total War, but they drop like flies. Two died in that turn, it was 230 by the end. Training dummies. So this army has increased melee attack. Osidon. Just real quick, Osidon, what do you think Trained the units the in your army top. are named? They, I know they had bad melee attack, so that might lead you to believe they needed to practice. But that's because they're archers. They're not supposed to melee attack. What do you mean recruit 30 new units? I already did that. This is horseshit. <laughs> Am I in Force March already? No, I'm not. I'm just able to get all the way to here if I wanted to. So how do you feel must about me, dude? Quick, for I must not be yeah, you actually kind of like me. I think we're trade partners, yeah. The issue is I'm literally fucking surrounded by trade partners. It's like aside from Force Marching just into the waste beyond the mountains, Assuming there'll be green skins out there like there were down here. I don't really have a play other than attack an elf. Oh, hey, Johnny the Creeper of the Dreadfleet Vampire Coast. Neutral transport ships. My man, transport ships landing on your coast with an army are by definition not neutral. 
They technically haven't declared war yet, but generally pirates don't do that in the first place. Is this place less purple than it used to be? Are they getting less corrupted? Is that what's happening? It's cool how much the map seems to be changing over time. This was definitely more purple a while ago. Good job, elves. I can't I justify like not just going to war with this guy. Out of here, let's go. Yeah, I don't have allies to get involved in the first place. And this is going to be another all resolve, just because it's literally 30 guys versus the garrison. What did you expect? Okay, that's them losing 500 for a second. I thought it was me. I was losing my mind. Occupy. Melee defense plus 5. Spell resist 12. Eh, for another lord, it might matter. That is a really cool idol. Hell yeah. And we secured the province. We now have a second one. We can do another commandment. We get a thousand gold for completing that side quest. I'm guessing this was the capital. Corruption minus five, recruit rank and capacity plus one. I mean, it's probably not right, but I want to click that immediately. Oh yeah, there was no way clicking tribute to the Phoenix King was right, but yeah, like growth plus 20, construction cost minus 10 would have been so much more value, right? Anyway, uh, we're going to click this one this time because it seems more sensible. I should have checked that they're really unhappy. They seem like they're probably really unhappy. Actually, no, they're fine. So it's sack everything this time. Checks out. Champion of the Ever Queen. Yeah, everyone here is exhausted and tired, but I can still do local recruitment and get more fucking archers. Hell yeah. Also, we probably need to repair things here, just like that's how it goes. Actually, it looks like we didn't break anything somehow. Weird. So Tyrion can pick up a rally and start working on, what is it, favorable wins? Plus 10 armor for archers, plus 12% missile. Yeah, that's just a lot of missile strength. I can't justify not going towards that. Like, I've already gone so deep into red that not going further at this point is definitely wrong. Like, at this point, I just have to commit to the mistake I've made. If this guy's just going to stay in the army forever and replenish troops, then I should just be getting battle stuff because he's never doing the other actions then. I'm gonna take melee defense because his job is to tank and distract. Master of magic. Oh yeah, the other mage we have. Yeah, pick up harmonic conversion so you can get actual abilities, please. We're able to upgrade the gates, get more control, get more money. Checks out. Seems good. Oh wait, can I change the commandment whenever the hell I want? Oh, increase from trade tariffs and income from all buildings. Like such minor numbers. And then I buy a building for 1,700, and it's like that was 170 gold immediately, right? Rebuild Law Splendor has to be better. So let's just cancel this. And again, we're going to have to do the same test and editing. Did this actually do... Oh, wait. Yeah, it still costs the same amount. It probably takes a turn to go through. I'm going to not upgrade it for a turn then. Just to see if I'm right about that. Skip that notification then and end the turn. We're down to 223 factions. I think like six or you seven people died in the last enemies, turn. But there are foreign powers who may be sympathetic to your cause. I don't want to but click the assassinate button. Aggression with a foreign leader. We'll I don't do want to make non-aggression packs. I want to use my Trade archers. Relation. What absence? Who is this? Oh, this is the beast archer or beast archmage rather from earlier. Yeah, I don't want you back. You're good. You can stay gone. Now it wants you to get three provinces. They never stop. Just move in the gold post. Or the gold post, rather. Jesus Christ, words are hard. So, I mean, I just charge into their land like a champion. And, like, next turn, we'll start killing people. Scholar Supreme. For some reason... Oh, you're in, in camp. That's why you're so slow. We run forward, and I should be in reinforcement range if I get attacked, I would think. Shorty, you don't have to be perfectly beside them. Shorty, this is good enough. And now we can check our building upgrade. Does this still cost the same 70? No, it costs 1,500. Tremendously cheaper. Already clearly better than the alternative that I've been using. This place has grown, so we upgrade that. And just like immediately making so much more money than we were by marginally increasing our income. Instead, just grossly reducing our expenditures seems like the clear way to go. I think it's probably better to start the level 1 building than to upgrade the level 2 building. Not quite sure which one's better. Johnny the Creeper with his bats and his skeleton gang, huh? You want to go left instead of right? I'd appreciate that. Like, I got a bunch of archers. You know the war is not going to go well. 
Five people have died since the last time I commented on this a turn ago. The minor factions just get wiped out so quickly, don't they? There is a lull in the winds of magic. Can oh my god, are we finally calm? talking about the winds of Be magic? Wary. Yes, I would like to learn more about the winds of magic. This didn't explain it at all. Okay, so Chaos Forces care more about this effect because they get powers at high winds and they can't replenish at low winds, which seems really, really important. Zinch gets to manipulate them, and the Realm of Chaos is so messed up that magic storms are a thing. Which, uh, you know, they're, they're a thing. You have basically unlimited magic? I don't know, I can't tell what that means. But the main thing here is just that it's essentially a supply system for magical stores. Cool. Yeah, over my dead body. We're going in turn one. Servant of the King. So we have an army there. Is there another army inside the settlement? I think this has like a power thing on it. At your service. I'm either going to fight this manually at the start of next turn, or I'm going to fight it now. Kill them. Wait no, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Can I just like not do the fight though? I can just uh, I can retreat. I should just be adjacent to it still. You may wish to consider whether yes. an attack would be wise. There so we come I forward on a Sidon here. Oh wait, no, you're a Sidon. You're not the beast one. But I wonder where she was Ready that she was away course. at all then. Anyway, one. start the battle here. Valiant defeat. Yeah, it apparently thinks this is very bad. It's because there's a third army here. That'd do it. Does Break Siege do something no special, or does it, like, actually just Champion not do the Siege like I'm thinking it will? Me. It just doesn't do the Siege like I'm thinking. Okay. So if I were to come forward to here, I and then instead of doing the Siege, I attack hand. this guy. Do I get the reinforcements of my other army? I do, and all of that shit comes. And it is a hilarious clusterfuck of a fight. Seek safety. And we're definitely going to be doing this next turn. We're going to figure out exactly how this works. But for now, I'm done. I've been going for a little over an hour. So we'll get into a, a massive, grotesque field battle starting 30 archers against real armies next time. For now, I'm done. I've been trying to I've been having a good time, although I'm definitely very concerned that what I'm doing is incredibly wrong. I'm not sure what I should be doing. Because my faction's about diplomacy, but I look at the idea of confederating somebody, I'm like, oh yeah, negative 105, that's just not, that's a non-starter, can't do that. But anyway, I'll talk more about everything next time. I feel like I'm learning a lot by doing it wrong. For now, I'm done. Thank you for watching, I hope you're having a good time. Thank you to my one Patreon supporter, Jeffrey B, and I'll see all of you in the next one.